So now we'll paint an upright painting, a coloured painting with water in it. I have over here my colours, that's phthalo blue, and of course our white, crimson, raw sienna, that's a rather dark raw sienna today. Different brands of paint have different tones in their colours. And I have here ultramarine blue. I'll take a little bit of the crimson, put it in with the ultramarine blue. This will form a grey, and right through the painting we need the grey, but we we'll just mix a little bit for the sky. So I'll put those colours together, not too much crimson. The crimson is usually a much stronger colour than the blue. So that's our grey and our white ready for the sky. So with my size 10 flat hog bristle brush, put plenty of white paint over the top of the board. Crisscross, crisscross, the top two thirds of the board. That white is rather runny. I thinned it out with some water and some retarder medium to stop it drying so quick. Take it down the middle. You can leave a bit on the edges if you wish. You can leave these bits if you wish. I'm painting in acrylic. You might be painting in oil. Do the same thing. Use both sides of the brush with a long brush stroke. And then I'll add the phthalo blue to the corner. Crisscross, crisscross the very corner of the painting. Bring it across to the middle. And then clean the brush. Clean the brush by pulling it through a piece of paper or rag. Bit more blue. You can smooth this out and make a very smooth sky if you wish. Or you can just put it on and practice. And as you work through these paintings, your skills will become better and better. That's the top of the sky. And that's good enough. Let's put a bit more blue in there then. We'll have a nice blue Australian sky and smooth it out a bit more. That's okay, that'll do. You can leave your sky like that if you wish. Or you can take your round hog bristle brush, dirty it in the grey that we've mixed there, and then pick up some white on one side of the brush only. Take it to the top of the painting, put the dark on, and there you go, round and round. Now you can practice your clouds. The way to get good at painting clouds is to find an old board and have a practice on it. And after a while, it'll become second nature to you and you'll be able to paint clouds anytime you wish. So it's a good idea to practice your clouds. See that? I'll clean the brush here. That's too dark. I don't like that. Let's put the white back in and a little bit more blue sky underneath. That's better. And I'll finish it off to the edge of the board here in case we need to. I think the trees might come up in there. That's a pretty blue, that ultramarine blue, isn't it? And up into here, a few more clouds. Just put a few more. And of course, as we come down the paint, the clouds will become smaller. There was a little bit of raw sienna got in there. That's okay. So that's our sky finished. All there is to it. My brush is a little bit dirty. There's a few hairs there. We won't worry about that. But if you want to, you could put a glow coming out of the sky. We didn't need it. And then with a clean soft brush, just run over your clouds. I'm using a fan brush here. That seems to work all right. I'm using it because it's the only brush I've got clean at the moment. There we are. Just softly over in all the same direction and make your clouds move. Now don't worry too much about your sky. They'll come good after a few paintings. All you need is a dark corner and you do need white here. White gives you the perspective. Now for a mountain. I picked up some blue. That's ultramarine blue. And we'll paint the mountain in like that. Remember our pleasant curves. And it worked in well with that crimson underneath there. That'll do. One mountain. A bit of mist coming in from underneath. And maybe another darker mountain in here. And maybe another one in here. But keep that pleasant curve shape. And a bit more mist. Get used to just putting the paint on without fiddling around with it one brush stroke. As long as you brush in the right direction. That's it. That'll do. And then all this area here needs to be coloured in with the dark. So that's mainly the blue. Let's go to the grey. We need grey there. Just do exactly what I'm doing and you'll turn out a nice picture. Don't come in don't come too close to your edge like that. Don't, don't come like that. That's not good enough. Do need to come right in a little bit to give your picture a little bit of warmth, a little bit of body. I'm putting some crimson in there with that because I put the blue on there without the crimson. So blue trees in the distance, and then they come darker as they come towards you. 
So if you've got a choice of colours to put on, put the bluey colours in the background and the darker crimsony colours as they come towards you up here in the foreground. That's the undercoat for our trees. I'll introduce another colour onto the palette now and that's warm yellow. Warm yellow is the yellow that looks more like an orange rather than a lemon. And I'll dirty my brush in the grey and pick up some warm yellow and let it run through the white. That'll sort of soften it a little bit. It's a bit strong. Like that. You see on my brush I have dark on one side. Not much dark, just a little bit, but a lot of paint on the other side. That's what we want. Now watch what I do here. Don't put them low. Start well above the dark colour and dob on little trees. That's little mushrooms. Each time I dob it on it forms a mushroom. There you go. And we do this. This is the same brush stroke we use on every tree. But you change it for different sorts of trees. And we just unload the brush there. Now this yellow is turning green because there's so much blue here. Because the paint underneath is still wet. If the paint underneath was dry, I'd need to load the brush different. I'd need to load the brush with dark and light on. So if your undercoat is dry here, load your brush with dark on one side and then light on the other. And then you'll get the light and dark come off like that. You need to practice this brush stroke. Of course the light is on this side of the tree, on this side of the painting, and on the other side of the tree, on the other side of the painting. Clean your brush, pull it to a chisel point, pick your paint up again. Now you don't need fancy brushes. It's just a matter of learning to use the tools, and if the brush is no good, you'll realise it's no good. But most of the time it's just a matter of persevering with your brush strokes until you learn the right way, and then continue with your painting. There you are. Like that. That's the effect we want. Now for the water. I have my flat hog bristle brush loaded with plenty of white. The water is here. Let's paint in this area white. With a horizontal brush stroke backwards and forwards. Brilliant white paint. Like that. And I'll pick up a little bit of thallo blue. Start in the very corner and then slowly move up into the white with your brush stroke and you automatically blend it. As you come up, you'll slowly blend it. Leave the white there, we do need that white. Then with plenty of dark paint on your brush, paint in what would be the reflections here. Just like that, we'll take them right down there. If you're painting in oils, you might want to leave this white paint off here because it becomes too thick. If you're painting in oils, you might want to scrape it off if you've got white paint there. There, that's about where the reflections are. Then we'll put the sunlight in the reflections. That's it, down that side like that. Not perfect. I'll put plenty of paint on there. Dab, 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 dab. Now here's where it's wise to have a very soft, clean brush. I'm using my fan brush because I haven't got a soft, clean brush. Just pull it down like that, that's all. And clean your brush very often. Now if you had a very soft brush, you could do a beautiful job with this, especially with oils. A little bit there, let's put it back in there. Pull it down into the water. And that's basically your reflections. But if you can do this, you'll get shinier water. But don't spoil your painting, just do it a little bit if you wish. While we're up close now, with my little round brush, with two fingers and white paint, we'll paint in the trunks of the trees. You can use white paint or off-white paint, Put in these little branches, but don't space them all equally spaced. Have them all different spaces. And you can put a couple down into the water, because you get that. Looks nice in the water. There we are. These should be off-white. But we're just practicing. Just a tone of raw sienna in the, look good and that white one would look nice in the water we'll put it there and the same thing here just a few little branches 
The branches go in the dark part of the tree. You notice they're not in the light part, they're in the dark part of the tree. And also they face into the picture. You'll see I haven't got any branches leaning out that way. It's because I want to attract your eye into the picture. That's it. Now with the painting knife, I want to pick up some bright colours. So let's run a little bit of yellow through that white. See those pretty colours? Oh, we put a little bit of crimson in there too. And this will be the bank. And we pick it up with a knife like that. Oh, maybe a little bit more yellow. And place that back there on your bank. Horizontal. That's your bank in the distance. And now on my knife, in the same way, I've picked up a little bit of dark. You see the dark on there? Place dark line. Now that bank comes towards me. I'm not going to bring my dark line down an angle like that. I'll put my dark line on there and on there and stagger it towards me. And by just touching my knife in the white paint, my white paint's rather thin. Now remember if you're working in oils, you do have to thin your paint. You can thin it in a jar, mix it up in a jar and thin it that way, but not too thin, but just so it comes off the brush easy. Then I'll load my knife again with the colours similar to there. And this time I want to put a bigger bank on here. So I'm putting my knife on at an angle. You see that? Take it across like that. We just finish it off to the edge. Maybe a bit more yellow in that one because it's closer to us. And a bit of raw sienna. So that's all of the colours there. And I've picked up quite a bit of my dark, my purpley dark and spread it across the bottom of the bank. And then my knife again, with a little bit of white on, zigzag it. And on the water, a couple of little ripples. Don't stop your ripples on the edge of the reflection there. These must be horizontal. Your water will not look flat if they're not horizontal. If you have any mistakes in the water, say that little mark there, put a line over it, and it knocks it out. And with our fan brush, we can turn this into grass. That's it. Now something that always looks good is a golden line just there on the horizon. It attracts your eye to the background. That's our painting at this stage. I have here some burnt sienna. Let's put that in there. That's the soil. This is rather close to us, so we can see the soil on the edge of the bank. And some crimson, we'll put some of that in. Finish the board off. Use the brush stroke that follows the bank, the shape of the bank. And here too. Over that, I'll run some yellow. I didn't clean my brush then, but it doesn't matter because it's all muted together, these colours. put the yellow on and leave the dark in the corner. Now we need a little bit of light coming in there. With the fan brush again, we can turn that all into grass. Start from the background and work forward. Leave some of these nice bright spaces. You put in the dark, push it up and then lift the brush off. Leave that there, put it on, lift it off and up over the water gives you good perspective there and very dark in the corner I'll come down and we'll put some more paint on there to get some real dark ones I didn't mix my paint on there, there was blue and crimson on there all together gives you all different coloured grass I have a few colours here on my palette ready to pick up for the tree with my knife I'll pick up the brown that's burnt umber I have here and I'm picking up on that side of the knife because I want the light of the tree on the inside of the tree. Burnt umber and white. Then I'll run it through the burnt sienna to give us some pretty colours. You can use all sorts of colours here. Flesh tint's a good colour to put in here. I'm just using a basic palette. And we're going to sculpture a tree down through here. Don't take it through that intersection there. Otherwise it'll become confusing to the eye or that intersection there. Keep it over here or over there. I think we'll keep it over here to start with. Let's see what it looks like. And maybe not too big. Ooh, maybe I might keep it down a bit. I like those clouds. If your clouds are no good, take it right up. Here we are. Tip of the knife. Bring it down slowly. 
Doesn't matter if you're working in oils or acrylic, this will work. And then load your knife with some dark colours and give it a dark butt. A bit of purpley grey purple colour. I do want the tree to disappear into the ground. And I think I might painting I want another one to balance it. That tree doesn't seem to do much. Anyway, we'll put another one in. I have to watch where I put it. Um, here. That's okay. Looks pretty good. Into there. Tidy the butt up again. Fix the grass up with a fan brush. A little bit of yellow there. And if you wish, you can put some twigs laying around like that. Or laying around. They're facing into the picture also. Nothing there. One there. That's too much. Bring it in. Facing into the picture. As if everything is facing in. Then touch it up again with some little bits of grass. So that's the corner finished. Now we need some branches. With my little brush, we'll finish off the branches. Hold the brush with two fingers. Doesn't matter what colour, as long as they're dark. And you can also use some lights, some darks and some lights. Try and balance your tree a little bit so it's not all leaning in. You do need it leaning in, but try and balance it so it doesn't look like it's going to fall over. That's enough, just like that at this stage. Then with my round hog bristle brush, I'll load it with, I've mainly got blue there. I'll add a little bit of raw sienna into it. I'll pick up the bluey, run it through the yellow, and the yellow will turn green when the blue touches it, and bring it across to your painting, and dab, dab, dab. There we are, the foliage. Load the brush again, and we'll have a lot of foliage. Dark on one side, and light on the other. Keep these mushroom shapes. You must have these mushroom shapes. So that's our little river scene. You can practice that over and over again. Big ones, little ones, long ones, short ones, any colour. Just a matter of practicing and learning to use the brush. <laughs>